Dracarys. Two minutes of opening credits, including this harpy statue squatting literally spread eagle. Jeremy hates opening credits cliche. I would never send this show again if Jamie's hand would pull an Evil Dead 2. Skip. Is that the sort of thing you and your sister go in for, Kingslayer? She loosened you up for us. Considering how many people seem to know already that Jamie is f***ing his sister, I have to wonder if attempting to murder Bran was really necessary. Are you forgetting that these people only know about Jamie and Cersei because Stannis sent letters to every corner of Westeros? Because they didn't know before. Man, there's so much punching and kicking here, it might as well be an ending to an MCU movie. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the episode cliche. The sorcerer. <laughs> Hello, my old friend. So Tyrion walked in to talk to Varys just as Varys was about to reveal he had captured the man who had taken his livelihood away? Or, and brace yourself, cause I'm about to break the universe with my insane intellect, maybe Varys is only fucking around with his prisoner because Tyrion is there. He's your protector now. Our good friend Craster. Who's that again? Craster? Seriously, trying to remember all the characters on this show is like trying to name all the state capitals in alphabetical order. Jeremy has a shit memory. His shipboard inventory. Inventory? He just subtracted a full syllable from the word inventory. And I can't decide if Game of Thrones is doing research on old pronunciations or just leaving errors for the hell of it. Bitch, what are you talking about? Are you expecting these people to talk with American accents? Cause they ain't American. Inventory. I'm missing something obvious you're about to point out. Well, that is my job, Friar Kendall. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the episode cliche. Two feather beds. He's bringing two feather beds for the cabin. Dun dun dun! Although considering how much of a particular ass Littlefinger is, couldn't he just want two beds for himself? Or maybe he's bringing a companion along for the lonely nights at sea? But that wouldn't really be in Littlefinger's character, though. He's not the type of person to bring a random whore along with him to fuck away at sea. Just because he owns brothels doesn't mean he's that horny. Any predictable tragedies? Hunting and drinking don't mix. Note to self, cancel all that wine I ordered for the safari I'm taking this fall. And skip. Aw, finally Marjorie will be the one to show Joffrey how to be a good king. I thought I told you to skip. Theon sure is pretty light on his feet for a guy who is only a few days out from having giant screws drilled into him. I would think jumping and running would feel like, well, torture. Have you ever heard of adrenaline? Yeah, Theon is running away from people who have brutally tortured him for a long time. He's not going to be giving a shit about the holes in his feet. He just wants to get away. Littlefinger is one of the most dangerous men in Westeros. <laughs> he couldn't even stop a maze runner. His name was Bannon. Damn, man, even though he can't get the Hulk to come out, there's no reason to kill Bruce. Two pop culture reference jokes in a row. Wow, the writers are stooping real low on this one. Brotherhood Without Banners will hunt you down. Surprisingly, Brotherhood Without Banners was also the name of my- Skip! Meanwhile, back on the only storyline we currently give a shit about, even if the writers don't seem to understand this. Did he just say that we don't care about the other storylines? Okay, Jeremy, you want to take this outside? Character acts ignorant of what is being said behind their back, but actually spoke the language the whole time, and now uses that to their advantage cliché. I mean, it's a badass use of the cliché, for sure. Jeremy sins something he likes cliché. 